All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak and we're just getting into that conversation. Like I mentioned to you that the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence is happening. It started on the November 25th, goes all the way to the 10th of December. This, this year's theme is Generation Equality Stands Against Rape. Let me explain something first of all. We had balanced our conversation. We had two women and two men coming in studio to talk about this issue. Unfortunately, the two ladies we had invited are unable to come this morning. That is Atio Wiso, human rights activist. She's unable to come because of the floods that have affected where she is. Alamitu Guyo, anti-FGM campaigner, is also unable to come. So it's just the three men. It's a manel. So we're not talking about gender-based violence without the women. They just couldn't, they were not able to make it. We had balanced it two and two. But either way, we'll still get into that discussion. Let me introduce my guest to you. We have Precious Nyoroa, he's a student at Tangaza University, also very instrumental. He also wrote an, uh, an article around the 16 days of activism, and we'll get into that in just a bit. And also Dan Matakaya, anti-GBV activist. Thank you very much for making time this morning. And Dan, I'll start with you. What What is your story? I know you've shared this story with me before, but for the benefit of people who may be tuning in for the first time, what really happened to you? Okay, thank you, Trevor Binger, for the invitation. Uh, my story, this was in 2013. Uh, 2013 to, yeah. and 21st September. Uh, I went to the house at around 5.30 in the morning. Yeah. I was on duty. I'm a police officer, yeah. uh, and that time I was attached to Kisi Central Police Station. So when I went to the house, my, my ex-wife was in the house, and she was sleeping. So I was so tired, I just went direct to the bed to sleep. A few minutes later, she woke up and poured a sulfuric acid on my face yeah. and ran away. It's... I felt the burning sensation, yes. so I woke up. I was so confused. I was also shocked. Mm -hmm. So I woke up to try and get some water mm -hmm. to reduce the burns. Mm -hmm. So before I reached the bucket, when I stepped on the floor, I felt uh, a shock. Mm -hmm. She had gone ahead and connected electri electri electricity mm -hmm. and poured some water on the floor. So she wanted me to be electrocuted in the house. Yeah. Luckily enough, I, at that moment, I didn't do anything. I just screamed for help and my colleagues came for my rescue. Yeah. And I was then rushed to, to the hospital. But before that, the two days before, we had a quarrel. Yeah. Uh, she wanted to take some the kids' belongings. You know, we had lost the, our kid the same year, 2013, in May. Yeah. And when we, after we had buried the kid, my ex-wife told me that she had been advised that we need to have uh, another kid so that the memories of the, the other one, Zishe. Mm. But I told her that, okay, it might be a good decision, yeah. but uh, we can give it away because we were, still, we were a young couple yeah. and I felt that someone somewhere was trying to intrude into our personal matters, mm. into ma our marriage, and trying to influence some of the decisions that we are making. Yeah. So I felt that we need to give it, a, 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 to give it some time, yeah. not because it was in a, the best decision, but we wanted someone somewhere not to feel that is helping us or is help is influencing our yeah. decision because we were we were young. Okay. So we agreed and we we said we'll do it some time later so that Isha Ivo is square to Mutuana Piana ana to tuambia tufanye venye anataka. So this time when she wanted to go to Naku, she, she used to stay in Nakuru yeah. and as I've told you I was in Kisi. Yeah. So when she wanted to go with the child's belongings, yeah. items, yeah. so I told her no, there's no need yeah. because we are still together. Okay. So we had a quarrel yeah. and then I called her mom. Mm. She was such a, my ex-wife was such a quiet person. She was not someone who could share her experience or express herself like 
kuongea what she's going through mm. so i called her mom nikamwambia i told her this is what is happening then she called her to embu mm. so that day she was supposed to travel that is the day she poured the acid on my face okay. yes yeah, uh, and um, you're very brave for sharing that story but now there's this 16 days of activism is going on right now and let me bring in pressures on this pressures what do you think is the missing link here i saw your article on the daily sometimes back what do you think is the missing link on this 16 days of activism against gender based violence thank you trevor as you know this campaign began 1991 with yeah. uh, the center for women's uh, guide for leadership yeah. with the aim of uh, at least bringing to an end or at least lessening cases of gender based violence yeah. especially for women at least that's what their mission statement states yeah. and since then the campaign has been observed every year up to now so i've been following the campaign for quite a number of years and when you look at the the themes for every year and the emphasis it has been on the women's side yeah. and as you read in my article that appeared in the daily nation on, on last friday uh, we have had enough maybe not enough but at least to some extent the activism on the side of women yeah. has been very vibrant i would call it vibrant and um every time they talk about gender based violent issues it's like the women are the ones who suffer the violence when men are brought into the the whole debate yeah. they are seen as perpetrators yeah. the ones causing the violence on the women yeah. so my argument is all this is good news i mean we all know violence is not good and it's good that some people are coming up to talk about it publicly so that it must be addressed but what about the men it seems no one is ready and is is what is curious to listen to the men's side yeah why should men be brought in only as perpetrators okay. i was referring to a research that was carried out here in kenya in 2014 by the national research center yeah. it was on gender based violence and the revelations were that uh, men men to suffer violence mm, they are giving percentages of like for the men, for the women it was 38% mm. of physical violence and uh, for the men is 20% it's lower than the the the, the one for women yeah. but it is still there yeah. and uh, again if you look at the website of the, the ministry of public service youth and gender uh, especially on the recent uh, gender conference they had in october yeah. they are also giving a hint that uh, violence against men is there and according to their report on the website um, men who are between 15 to 49 years of age 44% of them yeah. suffer some physical violence and for the women it's just slightly higher at 45% yeah. so you can see that the, the figures are not quite different yeah. but what i'm interested in is the revelation that violence against men is there is there mm. and then when you read the reports they always say that only few men turn up for uh, interviews yeah. on gender based violence and that gives a hint that we have a problem in the society mm. there must be something that is making men to endure through a culture of silence yeah. and this is where we have to to put more effort let's bring in men in the debate maybe uh gender based violence cases against women are persisting because we have forgotten a very important factor in the whole thing yeah and there is involving the men yes involving the men okay let's involve the men from a quite different perspective not as perpetrators yeah. but also victims in the whole uh, gbv campaign yeah, but generally the numbers show that it's the women bear the biggest brunt no? yes so how do you balance that conversation so okay. that the perpetrator doesn't be play the victim okay. or you don't normalize okay. the actions against women fine i'll answer that from two perspectives yeah. uh figures that are given f- by different organizations fighting for human rights for women yeah. uh, put uh, the percentage of uh, gbv Yeah. on women slightly higher than that of men yeah. but um, one could also take this from the perspective of saying women are coming up for interviews for the for for gender based violence yeah. few men are turning up and the percentage that is given for men it is based on the few that are turning up meaning that 
the many men that are not coming up for, for, for the for the GBV interview is campaign, yeah. if they open up, you, you could be baby shocked with the, the percentages. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, the other perspective is that um, some researches show that uh, women suffer more of sexual and uh, physical violence, yeah. while men suffer mostly verbal abuse, verbal violence. Mm -hmm emotional, financial, and psychological. Mm. If, if you, those perspectives put the, the percentage on the, on the men's side higher than women. Okay. So you can see that uh, each side has, has its own, own high challenges. percentage, you see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Dan, you, you have an organization that's fighting against this culture of silence. So we'll just give, take us through that a bit more. What do you encourage the men to do? How does it work? What does the organization push for? Okay, for me, during my journey, yeah. uh, during my treatment journey, uh, I came across many men who are going through violence, who are victims of domestic violence. But you know, the unfortunate thing is that our society does not, is not ready to listen to men, yeah. does not give men a uh, safe space to talk and share what they are experiencing in marriage. Yeah. This is in terms of violence. That's why you can see the numbers for women is a bit higher mm. because they come out and share their, their preventers, they, what they are going through, even with friends. But for us men, mm. it's unfortunate that we, what I'm going through, I can't even share with my friend because the society has given us some standards that we are supposed to live up to. Yeah. Because when a man comes out and share... Uh, what he is going through, maybe the abuse. Uh, you know, the society tells him to be a man, be a man enough. Mm. So this statement, be a man enough, don't cry, men don't cry, is what is affecting men yeah. at this stage. Yeah. Maybe when, when they are being abused. That's why they don't want to come out and share what they are going through. Because they have been labeled as perpetrators. Mm. From the word go, men are the perpetrators of the violence. Yeah. But when they, are, they become victims, no one wants to listen to them. So for me, uh, after meeting many men who are going through the same and they don't have someone to talk to, to share their experience, I decided to come up with a, an organization mm. just to get a platform where I'll encourage men yeah. to talk about violence in marriage. Yeah. Uh, and what we are doing we are creating a safe space for these individuals, for men to, to share, mm. freely to share, to feel free and share their, so their experiences. Uh, this organization, we, we tend to have uh, professional people, professional yeah. counselors, yeah. who will be ready to listen to these men. Because uh, one thing that makes men not to share their experience is that the people we want to share, we are willing to share with, they go on talking about us, talking about men, telling other people that this man is not a man enough, yeah. and a pig is being abused, they mm. are nigh. So, he, men get stigmatized. Yeah. yeah, that's why we want professional people to, for, to be ready to listen to these men and walk with them through the journey. Yeah. And at the same time, and we want to set up a psychosocial support center whereby we have men who are going through violence yeah. but after counseling where do you expect this man to go yeah. you expect him to go to the back to the house where he will as well be abused even after counseling we want that after counseling what shall we do to this man we want to have the center whereby this man can stay it can be a safe place for this man yeah. to stay as he undergoes the psychological, the yeah, the therapy. Okay. Okay. Then after the therapy, yeah. we can have an alternative that, okay, you know, you can have an alternative. Yeah. It's not a must, you go back to that house where yeah. you are being abused day and night. Okay. You can have an, an alternative, you yeah. can come out of this abuse. Okay. Yeah, that's now we come in with uh, some project to yeah. empower them. Yeah. even economically, so that they can think, they yeah. can do something 
to as well help their children yeah. and then they live a happy life. So the first time you came out and talked about the attack and that happened to you, how was it received even by your parents, <coughs> your peers? What did they say? Okay, they were so happy because many men, in fact many men supported me because this is, this is what they are going through yeah. every day. Mm -hmm. But there's no one who is ready to talk about it. So when I came out, uh, many men reached out on me yeah. and they told me they are going through violence, they are going through all this sort of violence. So, yeah. And even many women who called me and told me that my son is going through this a chain of violence yeah. all day, all night, but he can't come out of it. He, he can't even share because... Yeah. Uh, there's no one who wants to listen to, to him. Yeah. And that's why at some point you can see men, they are all kilowakati, they are kwabas. Yeah. It's not because they want to be there. It's because they are afraid even of going to the house. Because yeah. when, I do, uh, when they go to the house, there's no peace. Okay. There's no peace. So that's why the campaign we are spearheading is to try and encourage men yeah. to come out and share because the moment we'll start sharing the story yeah. that's the way now we'll they'll get the healing and the support okay they, yes precious how much of this is based on culture and the rationalizing or even normalizing of that conversation you come from malawi for example mm -hmm. how does it compare with kenya what is the strategy there that you wish would employ here okay um i would buy your idea that there's a lot of cultural influence yeah. mm -hmm. in the whole in the whole system like uh, what uh, mr dan said yeah. men suffer that cultural uh, cu culture of silence yeah. because men are portrayed as the ones that should be tough in the society the ones that should not show any sign of weakness yeah. the one the ones that should not cry men should not cry yeah. this is the the kind of culture we have especially here in africa and uh, and so we have a lot of men suffering in silence yeah. because this is a system that doesn't allow them to express themselves. Uh, comparing Malawi and Kenya, I would say, okay, both countries are facing the GBV at yeah. a different level, though. Um, I think if media reports are anything to go by, the, the media reports of Kenya, yeah. um, GBV in Kenya towards men is is higher than the, the, than that of Malawi, especially the aspect of killing uh, wives killing their husbands, mm. um, and even the, the ones of men killing their wives is actually higher in Kenya. The kind of violence we have in Malawi, yeah. we have like men beating women, but not reaching the extent of killing. Those uh, cases of killing are. Uh, I, are lower yeah. than here. Maybe it's because we have a different system. I come from a matrilineal system mm. uh, whereby in marriage women have more power and when a man marries a wife yeah. the man goes to stay in the home of, 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 the, of the woman. That's your culture? Yeah, that's our culture. <laughs> so right. maybe in that case yeah. cases of GB violence will be a bit lower because you are in the woman's house yeah. His, her parents are there. In the cases of you abusing her in the presence of her parents, they are a bit lower. You can't kill her yeah, and the parents when the parents are around. So you stay in the homestead of the, the wife. Okay. I, I can see yeah, it's a different thing. It's so very different. It's yeah. very different, I know. Yeah. And uh, maybe that could be a contributing factor that, of course, women are beaten in marriages. Yeah. And, uh, but cases don't go, uh, generally don't go to the extent of the man killing the wife. Okay. And, um, but I think the activism on the part of women, Kenya is doing better than Malawi. There are a lot of platforms that uh, yeah. are opened up for victims of GBV to yeah. come up and share their experiences. Okay. And I think on that, on, that, on that aspect, Kenya is doing well. Okay. I think what we should do, what Kenya could do, I, I would just recommend for both uh, Malawi and, uh, and Kenya, because it seems the root cause is, is the same for both mm. countries. It's the culture, mm. it's the system, it's the structure, the way we have structured our society. Yeah. What are the stereotypes that are, are what are given to, me, to men and women? Yeah. Uh -huh. 
I mean, men should be told that it's not, being, it's not part of being tough to hide the violence that you have suffered. Because men who want to appear tough, and, yeah. and so we can come up to say, I was beaten by a lady. Yeah. That would be a big blow to our toughness, to our maleness. Yeah. And this is what we have learned to believe all along. So it's, it's a structural problem. It's a cultural problem. It's a system problem. Okay. So we, we really have a lot of work to do on this. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that uh, Mr. Dan, having been a victim of, uh, of GBV, did not just sit silently, but created a platform where men could be heard as well. Yeah. But maybe it's not enough. Uh, one person can't manage this mm. because it is a structure that everyone knows. Yeah. If not in, only, only in Africa, maybe in the world. And we have grown up with it. Okay. It is embedded in our own values that it is part of values that men should be tough. So okay. everyone should be involved. Everyone should be engaged. All right. Yeah, yeah. I have to take a quick break here on Daybreak. When we come back, we'll be concluding this conversation on gender-based violence. Like I mentioned earlier on, two of the ladies we had invited who are very instrumental in the 16 days of activism could not make it this morning. At your WISO human rights activist and allow me to do your anti-FGM campaigner. They couldn't make it this morning. So it's just we are the ones who are still now left talking about this issue. But there's... It started on the 25th of November, goes all the way to the 10th of December. It's 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. We'd like to hear from you as well. What have we been getting wrong and what should be the new strategy? That is actually where we're going to go into next, the new strategy to deal with this right after this break. 22422 is the SMS line at Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya. Hashtag Daybreak. I'll sample some of your views and your feedback during this broadcast. Stay with us. All right, thank you for staying with us. We're still talking about the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. The theme this year is Generation Equality Stands Against Rape. And like I mentioned earlier on, we are invited to all the people who've been taking part in that. At your whistle, human rights activist and Alami Tuguyo, anti-FGM campaigner. They couldn't make it, unfortunately. But Dan Matakaya, anti-GBV activist and precious Nioro, a student from Tangaza University, is here with us. Let's see what you're saying online and on social media as well. 22422 is SMS line. We're asking you, how do we fix this issue of gender-based violence? Henceforth, what should be the new strategy? And we have Abel from Eldred says... Gender violence stems from our cultural beliefs. The way we end gender violence is through education. Ensure 100% transition of girls through all levels of education. All right. See if education is one of the main ones. Comment from Eldred as well says GBV in this country has reached unprecedented levels. While education has been regarded as an enabler, most of the violence being witnessed involve even those at the higher echelons of learning. The fact that the GBV being witnessed is fatal worries more because it further depresses an already stressed society. Such a society cannot be productive. This, in turn, completes and complicates the GBV cycle. All right. Nixon from Kinaruma says, Gender-based violence is committed by a person who, in fact, has no self-respect. Respect yourself and respect others, too. All right, let's see what he's saying on, on Twitter, Trevor Mbijat, Citizen TV, Kenya, hashtag Daybreak Engineer Lazaro. It's good to speak to you again this morning. You say many organizations fighting gender-based violence mostly treat men as culprits even before getting into the bottom of the matter. That's why men are suffering in total silence and sometimes acting very dangerously. Samo Indi says, my heart goes out for Dan following a mishap he suffered. Stricter laws governing GBV should be in place and affected fully all right thank you for the feedback keep them coming how do we tame the gender-based violence scourge that's happening in the country and dan uh, the, i was looking through the u.n women website yes. and they're mentioning very many challenges as the reasons why uh, Gen gbv still continues one is lack of political will and leadership limited resources and infrastructure short-term and fragmented investments changing priorities within a broad mandate but i'm mostly interested in number five they say lack of skills and knowledge among police and other security actors you have been in the force as well you're a police officer yourself and yeah. also having gone through gender-based violence yourself did you see a gap 
Okay, maybe from what they say, you know, they have taken their research uh, across the board. Yeah. But I think Ken in Kenya, right now, we are doing better. The police, uh, we have many police officers who have been trained to handle these cases, yeah. cases of violence, when it comes to cases of rape, from the way they investigate yeah. and deal with them, the matter is taken to court. And then we have, uh, in each and every police station, we have a, a gender-based, a desk whereby these people are, 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 are received yeah. and they are given guidance yeah. on how to, what to do. But what I can say is that in Kenya we are well placed. Eh? Mm -hmm. I can't say it, it is the way they want it to be, but we are well placed, we are well prepared to handle the cases of gender-based violence. Okay. Yes. But what about the judiciary? Does it go all the uh, way to the end? Okay, you know, f the, ju the judiciary, maybe, I, I can't say, but from my perspective is that some cases, you know, cases take longer. Yeah. So when the cases takes longer than expected, even the then the perpetrators, they are given, they are bailed out and then they go on in their life as yeah. usual. Now the victims feel that there's no justice, mm -hmm. you know, because the cases takes longer. But, you know, the, when the victims get justice, it's a plus for them. Yeah. It, it heals, they get <coughs> healing from the inner, inner part. Yeah. Because the moment you get justice, uh, you feel good mm -hmm. as well. Okay. But what I could uh, say is that maybe uh, the cases should be given uh, priority, even yeah. in court, so okay. that it, uh, even the perpetrators, sometimes they, they, the court should consider when they want to bail out these people. Yeah. Yeah, so that even the victims mm. can feel even comfortable where they are. Because the moment this person is out, yeah. the victims feels like his or her life is in danger. Okay. Because this individual can do anything. Okay. Yes. And as we come to an end, uh, Precious, where should this fight actually begin? I've seen some of our viewers saying that it stems from education. I see the UN website saying this. one of the challenges they're also facing is dominance of informal justice systems and customary law. Where should this fight actually begin, from your, in your view? For me, I think the view that education is uh, very important too yeah. is... Uh, is, is, is a, a crucial one. And uh, it's not just formal education as we are used in the, in the formal education system, primary school, secondary school, and university, but education even at an informal level. Mm. I was looking at the Kenyan constitution on the issues of uh, human rights, yeah. and it has very beautiful articles. For example, Article 27.2 says that uh, every Kenyan has uh, an equal, sh should be given an equal access yeah and equal expression on the social forum, economic yeah. forum, and all other, uh, all other forums. Yeah. And even Article number 48 says there must be equal access to justice for all Kenyans. Yeah. But then, if you look at the implementation, mm. it has been a bit biased, like I've said. When you talk of issues of gender-based violence, yeah. uh, it has been just on, on, the, on the women's side. So education is a very important tool. Right from our homes, yeah. let's teach the children Let's not portray the, the male children to be tough and not to cry. Because if they grow up with that kind of mentality, and they will not be able to, to open up on issues that are, uh, that are related with weakness on mm -hmm. the part of men. So from the homes, parents have the responsibility to teach their children that uh, they, are, they are equal on the basis of being human beings. And they have to report anything that they feel like is violating their human rights. Yeah. Educators, uh, the curriculum. Let's see. Uh, let's check how we we have drafted our curriculum. What do we portray about gender? What do we portray about men and women? Mm. So, cultural education is is very important as well. F our culture has to change. Yeah. Men suffer violence just like women, and we cannot ignore their cases. They have to be heard. Yeah. Otherwise, we are ignoring a huge chunk that could. Um, could make us uh, get another stride in the whole GBV campaign. Okay. Because uh, I, I will refer to one case which happened in Kiambu County, whereby a man killed his wife and later on hung himself. Mm. 
but, but when he left the suicide note, he said he had a troubled marriage. Yeah. So you can see that uh, one case of violence might end up leading to another. Yeah. There's a high possibility that physical violence that men infringe on women could be an expression on another vi of another violence that was not addressed. Mm. For example, this man was going through emotional and psych psychological torture yeah. because of unaddressed marriage issues. So if you listen to the men, there is a high probability that we are going to go a mile uh, th than where we are now. Okay. So let men be heard as well. All right. Mm -hmm. Dan, what are your final remarks? Okay, <coughs> from what he has said, yeah. uh, we need as well as we raise our children, like maybe the boy child. Yeah. Some of the statements that we make that men don't cry, uh, you need to be a man enough, is what is affecting men mm -hmm. at this stage. Uh, now we need to change some of the statements. Let's tell this boy child that men can cry when, but when necessary, yeah. when it's appropriate. Yeah. So that at the time when maybe he's going through violence, maybe in marriage, he can as well come out uh, and cry to people, share yeah. to people that this is what I'm going through. Because uh, women are, has taken it as a weapon on their own because they know that we have a weakness. Yeah. We don't cry, we don't share. Now they use it as a weapon against us. Mm. But the moment we start the communication and telling our children that men can also cry, but when necessary, that's the moment we'll start now to to see people coming out and sharing their stories. Okay. Yeah, but uh, what I could want to, what I want to advise those people in marriage and who are going through violence that don't keep quiet. Mm. Just share, talk to someone, yeah. uh, because uh, through sharing, you will feel even una feel kama una pona. Yeah. You know, they say a problem shared is a problem half solved. Mm -hmm. So the moment you share, share it with someone. Go to uh, your pastor, get go to a church elder, or go to a family counselor, yeah. whether individually or as a, a nini, as a couple, yeah. so that you get help. Because some of the cases, some of this problem that we are experiencing, we have the solution within ourselves. Okay. But we need just someone to try and unlock and show the way. Yeah to solve this, those issues. How, how do people get in touch with the organization in the event that they want to share? What, how do they get in touch? Is it on social media? Is it a phone call away? What happens? Yes, uh, you can call me yeah. or you can send me an email okay. or even on social media. Many people have reached out to me yeah. through social media. Yeah. Others have called me directly. What's your page on social media? Uh, it's done. Yeah. My, on Facebook, it's done. Shishia. Dan Shishi. Yes. Okay. Both even on Twitter yeah. and Instagram. All right. Yes. That's fair enough. And then my email address, you yeah. can send your email to dan at dan Shishi yeah. foundation dot org yeah. or dan matakaya at gmail dot com. Okay. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you for making time this morning. Precious Neuroa student at Angaza University and also a writer and Dan Matakaya, anti-GBV activist. Thank you so much for making time this morning. That's where we leave it earlier on. We had invited Atio Wiso and Alamitu Guyo, but they couldn't make it because of the current flooding situation that's happening. And the weatherman warns that there's going to be continued rainfall throughout the week, so be careful out there. Let's see what you're saying, though, on social media and on SMS as well before we, well, say the strict consequences. line tell us your name and where you're texting from diana says the evil things in the family lines must be replaced by godly living focusing on the teachings of jesus all right diana you don't leave a name here but you say gender violence should be looked at in a broader perspective bearing in mind that violence is not only physical